Hi, I'm Alex from the Wildlife Center of Virginia, and today I'm standing in front of Buddy the Bald Eagle's enclosure. He's an education ambassador eagle that was first admitted to the Wildlife Center in 2008, but he's not the only eagle that's at the Wildlife Center today. Since 2011, we've admitted an average of 45 bald eagles per year to our Hospital for Wildlife. Each case is unique. There are different circumstances of rescue, different plans of care, different outcomes, etc. But some of the most common reasons bald eagles arrive at the center include being hit by vehicles, injuries sustained from territorial disputes with other eagles, juveniles failing to thrive on their own, young eaglets discovered after storms destroyed their nests, and increasingly, the devastating effects of lead toxicosis. Every single bald eagle that survives treatment at the center is fully rehabilitated and successfully released back into the wild is worth celebrating. They contribute to both the overall health and resiliency of not only the eagle population in America, but the environment as a whole. But how do we know that for sure? Well, historically, gathering information about bald eagles post-release was a difficult task. Thanks to recent advancements in technology, collecting data on the movements, lifespans, and behaviors of bald eagles in the wild has become much more sophisticated. During the past 13 years, Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources biologists have fitted almost two dozen bald eagle patients at the center with GPS transmitters prior to their release as a part of an ongoing research project. For the Wildlife Center, having access to the data on tracked eagles is a fantastic opportunity for post-release studies. Some of these eagles have stayed relatively close to home, never venturing far from the immediate areas where they were released. Others have gone as far north as New Brunswick, Canada, and as far south as South Carolina. So what can we learn from this information? Firstly, we have learned that wild bald eagles' behaviors are changing. Territories are smaller, more time is spent defending nests, and prime habitats are occupied, leading more and more eagles to move inland, presenting new challenges and threats that they must adapt to. Also, we know that as scavengers, bald eagles spend a lot of time at landfills and in the trees alongside roadways looking for food. For example, several juvenile eagles make frequent visits post-release, traveling from landfill to landfill. We've also learned, to put it simply, wildlife rehabilitation works. The time, energy, and money being spent to care for bald eagles at the center is worth it. We know, without a shadow of a doubt, that rehabilitated eagles can live full, healthy, and productive lives. Even for bald eagles that don't survive treatment at the center, there is something that we can learn from their stories. For example, the very first bald eagle patient ever admitted to our hospital was in 1985. That eagle had been poisoned by carbofurin, a potent pesticide that, thanks to the research efforts that happened at the Wildlife Center, was banned for use not just in Virginia, but in all of the United States. The banning of carbofurin has saved an estimated millions of birds each year. Despite the new challenges that the American bald eagle is facing, their future has the potential to be bright, but only through a combined and cooperative effort between government agencies, private organizations, and individuals just like yourselves. It is up to us to minimize our impact on the environment. Pollutants work their way through the food chain, and we must create circular systems that don't pollute our soils, waterways, and wildlife. To learn more about the rehabilitation of wild bald eagles at the Wildlife Center of Virginia, ongoing research projects, and to learn about ways that you can help, visit our website, wildlifecenter.org.